Good morning, everyone. I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. Well, while we were sleeping, a volcano in Indonesia, Sinabung, has erupted, sending an ash cloud 5 kilometers, 3.1 miles, into the sky. This was its second eruption in three days, this one being uh, louder and higher and uh, more ash, more destruction. On Twitter, SV News has an image of the eruption and its umbrella cloud. Yeah, look at that. I drew out a map of the area of pyroclastic flows and uh, the heaviest of the ash. Uh, they believe that it's tectonic forces, a lot of the scientists believe, I should say, that it's the uh, tectonic forces uh, created that created the eruption of this volcano. The Indonesian volcano, Mount Sinabung, um, was dormant for centuries before erupting, coming awake in 2010. It turned daytime into night. Look how black that sky became. Yeah, people had to drive around using the headlights of their cars, street lights, etc. Uh, this was shared by Manuel Ruiz. Fox News had a Twitter post about uh, daytime turning to night. Sound prophetic? Yep. And on Twitter, PM Breaking News had a picture, a video of the eruption. Yeah, look at that. I am sure right now many of the airports are shut down. Um, and there's been a lot of talk about um, the umbrella cr cloud and how uh, certain types of ash get up in the higher atmosphere and turn to crystals and they can't be detected uh, which is a danger for uh, aircraft flying in that location yeah those poor people using google earth here is mount cinnabung uh, the black line is the distance of the pyroclastic flow uh, the areas in red are the no entry zones and then yellow would be uh, the heaviest ash and that has fallen and um, the different areas that would be involved um, with that ash supposedly about 30,000 people have been evacuated displaced because of the past eruption in 2010 they were told it wasn't safe to live there anymore um, but you know darn well that people end up going back, taking care of their animals, their property. See, this here is all the zone where people are not allowed to enter. Yeah, 30,000 people. And I'll just follow along this line, line here. And we got another city. A small village up over here. The volcano has been quiet for the last year up until the most recent eruption that occurred about uh, three days ago, I believe it was. People are being advised to wear face masks. Yep, yeah, that ash has glass in it. It can get embedded in your lungs and you cannot cough it out. It would be like cement inside your lungs. They're also being warned of possible lava flows. Yeah, these poor people. A spokeswoman for civil aviation said that aircraft were still flying in the area. Um, I am sure by now they would be shut down um, because of the damage that they flew through the uh, ash cloud, the danger that it would be. Volcano Discovery has an image, a satellite view, of the ash cloud that was taken uh, today, the 10th of August. But they know that the umbrella cloud can go travel upwind from the volcano. Volcanoes, when they erupt, they create their own wind. Prevailing winds may be moving northeast, but as the eruption occurs from the umbrella cloud it can cause um, the opposite direction of the ash fall now as I stated scientists believe that earthquakes 
uh, possibly have an effect on the eruption of this volcano, what they call mega thrust earthquakes. Um, along the island, we have the fault line. This is um, being caused by uplift, where two tectonic plates are crashing from two different directions against each other. This here is the Sumatran Fault System. Yeah, it's a bending, a buckling of this mountain range. And also off the coast, we have the Sundra Trench, a very deep trench uh, caused by tectonic movement going northeast, subsiding underneath uh, the Sundra Plate. And then further over, we would have the Pacific Plate. And then down below, we would have the Australian Plate, which is moving north. There is a paper, um, an article on earthsky.org, where it says three megathrust earthquakes that occurred in this region in 2005 and 2010 may have triggered the most recent volcanic activity at Mount Cinnabung. Scientists say these earthquakes include the magnitude 8.6 in 2005 and a magnitude 7.9 in 2007 and another magnitude 8.4 earthquake in 2007. And then the devastating 9.2 megathrust earthquake that struck Indonesia on December 2004. Yeah, there was many lives lost. There is a research paper about this. And their conclusion was that um, because of Cinnabon's magnetic, magnetic system, the magma that was under the ground, it was already pressurized. And the small changes that occurred because of these mega thrust earthquakes could have initiated the magma ascent rising up and the consequent seismic swarm that led to a 2013 eruption. Many of you have asked if large earthquakes could trigger the eruption of a volcano. And I have told you, uh, down in South America, there was a volcano that erupted two days after a major earthquake. And that, yes, large earthquakes can trigger a volcano to erupt, but they have to be first ready to go. And that that's just kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back that created this. There's another paper about the ash fall and how it can rise up to higher elevations, creating ice crystals that are not detected by satellite, and the danger that this has for aircraft. Uh, the European Union evidently has a program that they've started so they could help monitor volcanoes because of the lack of monitoring that's going on um, with the ash. They have an image of the ash. Um, I believe this is partly from the umbrella cloud. And how the ash traveled upwind during that eruption. So fine are some of these particles. They're not easily detected uh, by aircraft, by radar. And this ash can cause millions of dollars of damage to the engines of just one single aircraft. This article also gives a link to a YouTube video showing how the pyroclastic flow actually made the ash move in the opposite direction. I'll give you a link below for this video. You can watch this uh, pyroclastic flow. This is what I was saying, how it creates its own wind. As these lower altitude plumes also move more or less in opposite directions, they more likely reflect remnants of surface pyroclastic flows and or of the eruption column collapse that are also seen in a time-lapse uh, webcam video footage on the internet and there's the link of that video. Now research shows that they know for a fact that the column with, uh, going up to the umbrella cloud, part of the umbrella cloud, only rises up so high. And this is the collapse that they're talking about here. On AccuWeather, this very well could be the ash cloud. You can see how far it's moving downwind, but it's also moving upwind. And it's also spreading out, of course. 
Yeah, we won't know the thickness of the ash um, until probably days or weeks or months later. But it is very dangerous to breathe in, and it can cause power outages. It can cause roofs to collapse, not to mention the health effects. Definitely sending prayers to everyone. If any thoughts or comments or questions, please put it down below. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching. Please stay safe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye.